While this campaign is coming to an end, our movement is not. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us that, quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice, end quote. The fight for justice is what our campaign has been about. Senator Bernie Sanders dropped out on Wednesday. It wasn't too big of a surprise because we knew that Biden had a very insurmountable delegate lead over Senator Sanders. A number of the primaries have been delayed and there really wasn't much going on in the race. And I think with the pandemic, it was hard for Senator Sanders to move forward. And I think there is definitely a need to unify the party. So he was definitely under pressure. He said he did not see a path forward. However, it was notable in his address to supporters he did not full on endorse Biden. He said he would be happy to work with him, but he said he would also stay on the ballot in a number of upcoming primaries and try to amass as many delegates as possible to be able to inflict pressure on the Democratic establishment at the Democratic National Convention in August. So he, you, you'll see the progressive wing of the party led by Sanders really pushing the party to adopt a number of platforms like Medicare for All, universal college tuition, Biden reacted, I think, as a typical, um, you know, per, uh, competitor or politician would. He congratulated uh, S Senator Sanders on a run, Was seemed to be very conciliatory. He's been offering an olive branch to Sanders supporters and Sanders for a while now, very much praising the movement and such and promising to work together. Well, what in general I find is that the, that the Democratic coalition does not march in lockstep, that it really does uh, depend on uh, which candidate they nominate, and that will they will attract a somewhat different group of supporters. Now, one of the things in sort of thinking about this, almost nine in 10 voters, right, are, uh, if you ask them about Biden versus Sanders, or sorry, Biden versus Trump or Sanders versus Trump, basically going to give the same answer. They're either for Trump consistently or they're for one of the Democrats consistently across both races. But you had a 12% of voters shift as a result, uh, you know, of who the Democratic nominee was, either they're, you know, for uh, Biden, but they're unsure if Sanders, um, if Sanders is the nominee. So there is a subset of voters who will shift based on who the Democratic nominee is. Just about 7% of Sanders supporters said they'd vote for President Trump in November. Um, for reference, you know, four years ago, about 12% of them actually did per all the research people have done. That's a substantial number less. Um, Bernie Sanders coalition is made up of younger voters, people who are less likely than their older friends to show up at the polls on election day. Um, that was a challenge for Hillary Clinton in 2016. I mean, even in places like Michigan, their absence from the polls has sort of been blamed for some of her struggles there. Um, they're more likely than their older counterparts to pull a third party ballot, which was a problem for Hillary Clinton last time around. Eight in 10 Sanders supporters say they'll vote for Joe Biden in November. That means 20% of them aren't. Um, they're not necessarily going to Donald Trump, but, but they may not be showing up. I think looking forward here, I mean, Bernie Sanders could do a big favor for Joe Biden if he, if he got these folks to show up. Um, it's an open question about whether he'll be able to though. I mean, even in some of Bernie Sanders' primary contests this year, he openly said that he was concerned that some folks, some of these young folks didn't show up to the polls to help him out. So, um, you know, Bernie Sanders, if he can get those people to show up on election day, that'd be a pretty big deal for Joe Biden. I think uh, Trump is going to do everything he can to create a divide within the Democratic electorate. And I think particularly um, there are a number of, um, you know, the fact that um, Joe Biden was not able to get um, very much support at all among young Democrats in the primaries um, means it's going to be a challenge for him to mobilize. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for him to mobilize this group who he needs increased turnout from. Um, we saw that the Democratic coalition in 2016 was not quite enough to prevail in the swing state. Um, so what are they going to need to do to um, change the game in 2020? They're going to need turnout. Where do you get higher turnout? You get higher turnout from young voters 
to the extent that um, you know Joe Biden is not as well capitalized. Uh, sorry, sorry, not as well positioned to capitalize on uh, turnout from young voters. Um, that could be an advantage to Donald Trump. You see Donald Trump, ha- you know, talking about um, you know the fact that um, you know it talked about the concerns about the fairness of the 2016 primaries and the DNC and all those narratives. That these are all messages he pushed in the 2016 campaign against Hillary. Um, I think, you're, you know, he's, he's, they push the same kind of messaging, you know, the Democratic base, the sort of Democratic establishment sort of rallied at the last minute to block Sanders from being the nominee. So I think he's going to do all he can to stoke, um, uh, to stoke, you know, the unhappiness, potential unhappiness of some of those Sanders supporters. At the end of the day, though, overwhelming number, um, 80 percent plus. Almost 90 percent of supporters of one primary candidate generally end up supporting the nominee of the losing candidate. Their supporters generally end up supporting the nominee, but they don't quite support them at 100 percent. So is that percentage going to be more like 80 percent, 70 percent or something really strong like 90 percent? It's something that's still up for grabs.